Baker. Good morning, everybody. Hello, my name is Lydia. I'm sure there are many familiar faces out there this morning. Uh, I am an interpreter here at Anza Borrego Desert State Park. Uh, and today is Earth Day. So we are celebrating this beautiful planet today. And here in the desert, we've got a lot to celebrate. There are many beautiful plants and animals uh, and beautiful places to visit and explore in the desert. Uh, I encourage you all to get outdoors, explore nature today, or maybe this weekend, see what you can discover near you. All of our California state parks here uh, in this beautiful state are working really hard to protect something awesome. So I encourage you to look up uh, in your neighborhood, where are your closest parks and what are they working to protect? Uh, and today uh, we're going to do a little desert exploration. So Without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, a wonderful book that I have here called Lizards for Lunch, A Roadrunner's Tale. Uh, this is by Conrad J. Storad, a wonderful, wonderful author, uh, and illustrated by Beth Neely and Don Rance. It's got some really cool illustrations here uh, and is very informational and really great uh, if you're interested in learning about our friends, the Roadrunners. Now, before I get started, I just want to comment that sometimes when I'm hanging out back here, there is a Roadrunner that sometimes comes by. I can't promise, you know, they're wild animals. They'll do whatever they want to do. But sometimes there's a road runner that comes by. So if you happen to see that road runner coming by, feel free to type in that Q&A box. We've got a lot of you typing in the Q&A box, but I'll try and see. Uh, I'll make sure that I'm, you know, staying vigilant, looking around me here, making sure we don't have any road runners uh, right by me. I've got lots of other little birds. Uh, I'm sitting under a beautiful Palo Verde tree. I'll kind of lift it up here so you can see this beautiful tree here. So there's lots of beautiful animals out today. It's a beautiful day here in the desert. Let's get going, all right? So lizards for lunch, a road runner's tail. All right, hello, glad to meet you. Listen close, hear my tale. I live in southwestern deserts with coyotes, jackrabbits, and quail. Please call me Roadrunner, the fastest bird on the ground. Don't do much flying. I run in quick bursts that astound. You can see we got some jackrabbits here, some quail, and of course the mighty speedy Roadrunner. I'm a strong and proud bird, though great beauty I lack. I have odd skinny feet, two toes point forward, two toes point back. You can see his feet here. It's kind of interesting having two toes point forward and two toes point back. I bet that might give him some good balance running around. Snip, snap, crackle much. For breakfast, I gobble up bugs by the bunch. Crickets are chewy. Beetles go crunch. A hungry roadrunner likes lizards for lunch. Mom and dad fed us lizards, brought them right to our nest. They were plump, soft, and chewy. Fat ones with horns tasted best. See the mom and dad roadrunner feeding the little chicks. Look at that. They've got little forks in there. Do we think that roadrunners eat with, with forks? Hmm, maybe, maybe not in real life, but in this story, yeah. <laughs> All right. My long beak is sharp. My legs are quite strong. I like to run through the desert. I can run all day long. Look at this. Looks like we've got a roadrunner race happening here. Which one do you think is gonna win? I think maybe this one, number three, looks like he's in the lead. 
life in the desert is tough. There are dangers for me. I will fight if I must, but I run to stay free. Ooh, so road runners, one of the reasons why they're running is to escape from predators. Looks like we've got a snake here and ooh, a big hawk here. That road runner looks a little concerned. I spot my food from far off because my eyesight is keen, but running all day keeps my body quite lean. Mm. So running helps this road runner get exercise. Oh, look at that. He's spotting this lizard tanning in the sun. Listen close in the desert. You might hear my loud call, cooing notes to my family. Kukua, kua, kua. Got our roadrunner singing. And all these lizards and crickets and oh, look at that one up there, kind of dancing on this, this post here. Snip, snap, crackle, munch. For breakfast, I gobble up bugs by the bunch. Crickets are chewy, beetles go crunch. A hungry roadrunner likes lizards for lunch. My feathers are buff brown with a green and bronze sheen. I have black and white speckles, colorful bright eyes that gleam. Ooh, can look. Up close at the color of these roadrunners here. They're kind of striped. Look at all these different animals here. Is this one eating? This one's eating a little beetle here. You see that? I run through the brush, wings spread and flapping. The noise scares up insects. My mouth begins snapping. Look at him, it's coming for these, these creatures. Roadrunners are pretty fierce predators. Hoppers buzz this way and that. I snatch them with my long beak. The bugs are delicious, but it's fat lizards that I seek. Look at all these different animals and our roadrunners having fun searching for them. Oh, looks like it's going for that. That cricket. Some lizards have black collars or colored stripes that all match. But one thing is certain, lizards are real hard to catch. Some lizards are wiggly. Some have horns and thick skin. To catch one is tricky. It takes quickness to win. Look at all these lizards here. This one has a little kick me sign on it. Don't do that, friends. <laughs> oh, and our roadrunner is snoozing all the way back here. To fight a horned lizard can be quite a scene. Puffed like a big spike balloon, that creature looks mean. Whoa, look at this horned lizard here. And our road runner, who hungry road runners. I will eat but uh, mice, bugs, and spiders. Small sn snakes are a treat, but it's lizards I love. Their taste can't be beat. Snip, snap, crackle, munch. For breakfast, I gobble up bugs by the bunch. Crickets are chewy. Beetles go crunch. A hungry road runner likes lizards for lunch. The end. So at the back of the book, we have a really cool um, uh, section where we get to learn more about road runners. Uh, and road runners are just one of the many really cool creatures that we have here in the deserts of our, our beautiful country and here in California. Uh, and so I have a few photos to share with you all so we can take a look at some of these creatures up close. So I'm going to quickly 
maneuver myself around here uh, so I can share my photos. I'm wondering, have any of you seen a roadrunner in real life? Comment if you have ever seen a roadrunner in real life, or maybe you haven't seen a roadrunner, but maybe you've seen some really cool lizards, maybe. Maybe you've seen um, some other creatures out here in the desert. We've got lots and lots of really cool animals. I'm gonna share with you right now um, our beautiful road runner. So road runners are one of the fastest birds uh, and they're one of the fastest uh, flying birds. Uh, there are faster birds that don't fly, uh, but our road runners, they can run in quick bursts, sometimes up to maybe 15 or so miles per hour. That's really, really fast for a small bird. And they can fly, but they don't fly very well. Uh, they uh, might be able to fly up 10 feet or so, but then they'll just kind of soar around uh, 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 and glide back to the ground. So sometimes you'll see them um, in higher up areas, but mostly you'll see them running around on the ground. Uh, and you know, if you are a bird out here and you have to not only chase after food like lizards that are very fast, but you have to escape from predators. And if you can't fly, you're gonna wanna be able to run, right? So our road runner is a really great bird uh, for running as well as uh, in that story, we learned about all the different types of foods that road runners like to eat. They've got this really sharp beak that helps them to eat things like mice and insects, even small snakes. Uh, but of course, their favorite are lizards. So let's take a look at some lizards. Can any of you see this lizard here? Hmm, it's a little tricky to spot. This is one of my favorite creatures here. And I see lots of you are typing in here. Uh, this is one of my favorite creatures here. Uh, it is called a horned lizard. And that's what our story was telling. Our roadrunner loved the horned lizard. Uh, and I'll show you another photo here where you can see the horned lizard a little bit better. Uh, they've got these uh, little horns sticking out uh, of their skull. It's a part of their skeleton. Uh, and those horns make that horned lizard look pretty tough and scary, right? Helps to protect it. It's got this big suit of armor that it wears uh, so that it can protect itself from birds like room runners. So they're a pretty cool lizard, uh, one of my favorites. And they camouflage really, really well, which is they blend in. And not only does the color of their skin blend in, but also the texture of their skin. See how bumpy this Roadrunner's skin is? It helps to blend in with the bumpy sand. Let's take a look at what other lizards we have. Some lizards we have are pretty small, like this little side blotched lizard. Uh, and some side blotched lizards um, have kind of polka dots on them. Some have a little bit of blue in them. In fact, do I have another picture? Nope, not another picture of our side blotched lizard, but some have blue in them. This on the other hand is our biggest lizard that we have here uh, in Anza Barrigo Desert State Park. This is the Chuckwalla. It's got a fun name, right? Everybody say Chuckwalla. Say it maybe 10 times fast. Chuckwalla, 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 Chuckwalla. It's kind of hard to say very fast. Uh, but the Chuckwalla is a really cool uh, big lizard that we've got here. And another pretty big one is our desert iguana. Uh, and desert iguanas can get over a foot long. They've got a nice long tail. Uh, and You'll see them often hanging out here in the desert, sometimes perched up on rocks, sometimes cooling down in the shade beneath some bushes here. Uh, so our, our lizards that we have here in Anza Borrego are pretty fun to see and explore. I can almost guarantee if you come out to the desert uh, any day, you'll probably see at least one lizard. There are many different types of them all over the desert. But there were also some other animals that um, it said our roadrunner liked to eat. So let me pull up some other photos here uh, of different animals. 
uh, that we might find here in the desert that our roadrunner might like to eat. Uh, and I want you to comment uh, or, or type in our, our Q&A box, if you were an animal uh, out here living in the desert, what animal would you want to be? Would you want to be a roadrunner or a lizard? Would you want to be something different? What would you want to be? And I'm trying to find um, my other good photos here of some other animals that roadrunners might eat. I have um, two good ones here uh, that I'll share with you right now. And maybe I'll share um, some other birds that we have in the desert as well. Okay, so let's take a look at this little creature. Um, Roadrunners sometimes like to eat little rodents like mice. And this right here uh, is uh, one type of, of rodent that we have in our park called a kangaroo rat. I'm sure many of you um, uh, have heard of road run, uh, have heard of kangaroo rats before. They live in different um, uh, places here in California. And uh, this uh, kangaroo rat is one of my favorite little creatures. They typically only come out at nighttime. Uh, you can see them hopping around at nighttime, uh, sometimes along the roads. Uh, and uh, they're really, really good at jumping. They are so good at jumping. They can jump up really high to help escape predators. One of their biggest predators uh, might not be a road runner, uh, but one of their biggest predators are maybe some snakes, like say the sidewinder rattlesnake. Uh, and sidewinder rattlesnakes um, are also a creature that tend to come out at nighttime. They're pretty fierce predators. Uh, and if a sidewinder rattlesnake is launching towards uh, a kangaroo rat, well, that kangaroo rat can jump up. It can use its long tail, almost like a helicopter, to help it flail and move around. The, uh, the uh, kangaroo rat's going to change direction midair and go land somewhere else and confuse our sidewinder rattlesnake. So these animals out here uh, in the desert, they all have to find their own food, but they also all have to make sure they're not food for another animal. So I see lots of you uh, have typed in some pretty cool animals. Some of you want to be coyotes. Some of you want to be road runners. Some of you want to be lizards. There are so many different uh, animals uh, that live here in the desert and call this beautiful desert home. And they're part of this big uh, ecosystem uh, where all of our plants uh, and animals are working together. Some of them, um, uh, you know, find food from the plants. Some of them find food from other animals. Uh, and they all um, make this beautiful desert community. Uh, and it's important that we work hard to protect our desert community because things are changing a lot out here uh, every single day. Uh, and uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of something called climate change. Well, this climate change is something that happens naturally over long periods of time. So I'm talking millions of years. But today, climate change is happening really quickly. And that is because when we drive cars around or when we use electricity that comes from burning coal, we are burning these fossil fuels that emit gases up into our atmosphere, up into the sky. And those gases in the sky, they kind of act like a blanket. When you all wear a blanket, you feel pretty warm, right? Now imagine if you were wearing 10 blankets or 20 blankets, you'd feel hot. And so these gases in our atmosphere are acting like this heat trapping blanket, making the planet warmer and warmer and warmer. And out here in the desert, well, it's already pretty warm out here, right? In the summertime here in Anza Borrego, it can get almost maybe over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. That is hot, my friends. That is very, very hot. And so as we continue to uh, burn these fossil fuels, 
the desert is already getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And these animals and plants that are already living in such extreme conditions, well, we're not really sure what is happening to them. So we're studying them right now. We're trying to figure out which plants and animals are being able to uh, withstand increased temperatures, um, which animals and plants are okay with drier uh, climates with less water around. And sometimes we see that plants start to move where they live. Uh, the new plants that grow don't necessarily grow in the same place that they used to. They grow maybe a little bit higher up on these mountains back here where it's a little bit cooler. So when we um, are thinking about how we can protect our planet today, uh, I encourage you all to look up maybe in your classroom or with your families, how is climate change affecting your neighborhoods? What are some ways that we can work to protect these plants and animals that call um, the desert home and call your neighborhoods home? And when we come together uh, to talk with each other, we can learn more about how we can protect this beautiful planet. Uh, so uh, I'm sure many of you have some really cool ideas of how to celebrate Earth Day, how to protect our planet, but I encourage you all uh, to talk with each other and share with each other what you've learned about climate change and how it's affecting your neighborhoods. So I want to thank you all so much for learning with me today about some of the really cool plants and animals that call the desert home. Uh, I hope you all have a fantastic Earth Day. I hope you all get to get outdoors, explore nature, see what state parks are in your area uh, and how you can help uh, protect those parks as well. So thank you so much for joining me today, boys and girls. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Earth Day uh, and hopefully someday you'll get to come down here to Anza Borrego and visit me and see some of these really cool plants and animals with your very own eyes. All right, thanks so much, everybody. Have a happy Earth Day. Bye.